Hello grade fives, this is your teacher, Mr. McMurdo. Today we'll be going over lesson 6.5 to 6.6. .6. And in this lesson, we will be exploring volume. So I'd like to begin by looking at this picture on the right hand side here. This is just a regular shoe box. And we're going to do a little bit of a review from our geometry unit. When we look at the shoe box, we can use its attributes to describe it. And once again, its attributes are its characteristics or specifically um, characteristics that make it a certain shape or define it as a certain shape. So we can begin by looking at the number of faces this object has. Well, it's a 3D object, so you can count its faces. And remember, these are its faces. So you can see that this geometric shape has six rectangular faces. It's got six rectangular faces. Now we also learned another term. We talked about vertices. Or actually, we'll, we'll start with edges. So remember, edges are these lines here. These are the edges of this geometric shape. So we can see that this geometric shape has exactly 12 edges. Now, we also learned in our geometry unit that where edges intersect, we have a special, special term for this point. We call these points vertices. So we can see that this shape has eight vertices. Now, based on these attributes and based on the, um, the way this shape looks, we can name this shape. Well, this geometric solid resembles a rectangular prism. Now, the next question we want to ask is how could we find how much space is inside the box? Well, to determine how much space is inside the box, we have to measure it. We have to measure it. Then the next question is, well, how could you measure it? You could measure the space that is inside this box by filling it with a unit and then count. You can measure it by filling it with a unit and then counting the number of units. That's how we could measure how much space is inside. Now my next question is, well what should we use as units? Well, you could fill it with marshmallows. That would be one type of unit. You could fill it with balls. You could fill it with sugar cubes. You could even fill it with paper clips. All of these units you could use to fill this box. However, not every unit is made equal. And what I mean by that is not every unit is going to give you the most accurate measurement. So I want you to think about that. Which one would give you the best est estimate of how much space is inside this box? Would it be marshmallows, balls, sugar cubes, or paper clips? Think about that for a second. Maybe pause the video here. Think about it for a second. Which one of you, those units would be, give you the most accurate estimation or measure? of the space inside of this geometric solid. Here's the definition of volume. When you find how much find out how much space is inside a box by filling it with identical objects, you are actually measuring the volume of that box. So the definition of volume is the amount of three-dimensional space 
something takes up. So let's look at some irregular objects or some geometric solids here. This is a loaf of bread. Now I would like you to figure out what the volume of this loaf of bread is. Now do you need to cut out the dough on the inside and then place sugar cubes on the inside to find the volume? No. You can simply count the slices of bread. And if I were to count all these slices of bread, you would see that there are 21 slices of bread. So what is the volume? Well, the volume is 21 slices of bread because the unit is one slice of bread. Here's a box of crayons. What is the volume of this box of crayons? Now, I have some students, when I show this picture, they go and count each individual crayon, but you can see the number of crayons is written on the front of this box. So the volume of this box is 64 crayons. Now moving on to the next one, here's a box of donuts. What is the volume of this box of donuts? Well, you can simply count the donuts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve donuts. That is the volume of this box of donuts. So we had our units for each of these measurements were donuts, crayons, and slices of bread. My next question is, what unit do you think would give the best estimate of volume? Do you think it would be the donuts? Do you think it would be the crayons? Or do you think it would be the slice of bread? So think about that for a second. You're trying to determine how much space is inside of the box. So if I was to use donuts, do you think it's an accurate estimation? Probably not because there's holes in these donuts and then there's spaces in between each of these donuts. And then if you were to look at the crayons, they're, cyl they're cylindrical, which means that they're, they're round. So there's gonna be space in between each of these crayons and then in between each of the rows. So that space is not being measured or not being taken into account. So both of those units aren't going to give you the most accurate measurement of the amount of space inside of the object. However, these, lo these slices in this loaf of bread, they are perfectly stacked on top of one another and there's no space in between each slice. So it's going to give you a more accurate measurement of the volume of the loaf of bread. So when you're determining what units to use when you're measuring the volume of an object, it's important that you choose units that can stack on top of one, each, one another and then don't have any space in between each unit. Because if they do, it's not going to give you an accurate measurement of the volume inside of that object. So my last question is, what unit do you think would give the best estimate of volume? We would say the slices of bread. And why would the slices of bread be the, the give, would give you the best estimate? They stack perfectly on top of one another and there isn't any empty space. In the next part of this lesson, we're going to be talking about how to measure the volume of an object in a more accurate way and using standard units to measure the volume of a geometric solid. So when we are measuring volume, we are actually measuring the space inside the box in cubic centimeters. So a good representation of this would be to use snap cubes. So this is a snap cube here. And what this is, is it is a cube like this, which is one centimeter. It's one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter over here. So the length, the width, and the height of each of those snap cubes is one centimeter. 
So we would say that the volume of this is one centimeter cubed. And once again, we went over this in class, but when you're measuring perimeter, you are using one dimensional measurements. So it's in the first dimension. So your standard, your, your units would be just in centimeters or meters or kilometers. But if you're measuring area, you're looking at a two dimensional shape, which means you're going length times width. So you're looking at two dimensions. And when we're talking about volume, we're actually talking about three dimensional shapes or we're measuring the volume in three dimensions, the length, the width, and the height, okay? Now, I'm gonna measure, we're gonna estimate first the volume of this box in snap cubes. So if each of these snap cubes is one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, we could estimate the volume of this box by thinking about how many snap cubes we could fit inside of it. Now, one way to do that is to just randomly guess or estimate and think, okay, I'm looking at that box, I would think that maybe, I don't know, there's about maybe 60 snap cubes I could fit inside of that box just by visual, visualizing it and looking at the snap cubes and picturing how many I could fit in there and then taking them all out and counting them. Another way to estimate the volume of this box is to think about the volume of this box in layers. So for example, I could take a snap cube and I could place it here and I could place another one on top of it and another one on top of it like this and I could think about how many snap cubes high is this box or what is the height of this box. So I can think about that in layers. So once again, here's a layer. I could have a layer here. Then I could have another layer of snap cubes here and then a third layer. So there's one, there's two, there's three snap cubes. So I could think about maybe there's three layers. Then I have to think about, okay, how many snap cubes are there on each layer? So once again, if I had a layer of snap cubes along the bottom here, and this is all snap cubes, snap cubes, and then it went inside the box and I filled the inside of the box, how many snap cubes could I fit inside of this box on this bottom layer? Well, if you're looking at this, you can think about it as the area that's being covered by these snap cubes in the bottom of this box. So we can simply find the area of snap cubes along the bottom of this box by m measuring how many snap cubes fit along the front and then how many snap cubes fit along here. And then multiplying those two numbers together and that will give you a representation of how many snap cubes would be along here in this bottom layer. So the volume of that bottom layer, I'm going to estimate it as one, two, three, four, five snap cubes. Or remember our snap cubes are one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. So I would say five centimeters because the width here of each snap cube is one centimeter. So that's one centimeter, that's one centimeter, that's one centimeter, one centimeter, and one centimeter. So it's five centimeters wide, okay? Because I've placed the snap cubes along the front here, so that's five centimeters. Then I can count the snap cubes over here because once again, this is one centimeter, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight centimeters. So now what I've done is I've found the volume of that bottom layer because the area of that bottom is layer is length times width. So it's eight centimeters. So the layer, so the area of a layer is equal to eight centimeters times five centimeters 
which is equal to 40 centimeters squared. But that's not the volume of the whole box, that's just the volume of the bottom layer. So how can I take this number here? Well, I know there's three layers and I know that each layer is 40 centimeters cubed. I simply take my 40 centimeters squared, sorry, and I multiply that by three centimeters because once again, the side of this is one centimeter, right? And the side of this is one centimeter. And the side of this is one centimeter. So we know it's three centimeters high. So that's going to equal 120 centimeters cubed. Or another way of putting it is, I think I can fit 120 centimeters or 120 centimeter snap cubes inside of this shoe box. Now, what I can do is, this, this three layers is actually equal to the height, right? Because it's the height of the shoe box. So, the, the formula for this shoe box, or, for, or the formula for finding the volume of a geometric solid, so volume is equal to the length times the width times the height. So once again, this length times width is going to give you the area of each layer. And then the height is going to give you how many layers. So it's actually a very, very simple formula. You simply multiply the length times the width times the, times the height and that will give you the volume of the object. And it's really important that you understand that you always are representing the units in cubic units because once again, you're using three dimensions to measure the volume of an object. Okay? So let's do a few examples. So what is the volume of each object? Well, once again, volume is equal to length times width times height. Well, the width is one, two, three, four, five centimeters. Let's assume that each of these cubes is a cube, a cubic centimeter. So one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. So that's five centimeters. One, two, three, four, five. The length is five centimeters and then the height is one, two, three, four, five centimeters. So the volume of this object would be five centimeters times five centimeters times five centimeters, which is equal to 125 centimeters cubed. Now you could count all the cubes, but it's much easier just to use the formula. In these examples, it might be easier to use the, or it might be easier just to count them because there aren't that many of them, but I would suggest that you just get used to using the formula because as you get older, it'll be more and more complex shapes that you'll be um, determining the volume of. So once again, one, two, three, four centimeters by one centimeter by two centimeters. So the volume is equal to four centimeters times one centimeter times two centimeters, which is equal to eight centimeters cubed. This is, the volume of this shape is equal to two centimeters by two centimeters by two centimeters. So two centimeters times two centimeters times two centimeters is equal to eight centimeters cubed. And then when you have an irregular shape like this one here, B, which is not a rectangular prism, there's two different ways you can solve this. Um, you can find the volume of each layer and then add them together, or you can simply just count all of the cubes. So once again, this layer here, the bottom layer, would be three centimeters by two centimeters by one centimeter. So the volume of the bottom layer is equal to three times two times two centimeters times one centimeter, which is equal to six centimeters cubed. And then the volume of this top layer is two centimeters cubed. So they, it's going to be six centimeters cubed plus two centimeters cubed, which is equal to eight centimeters cubed. 
So I used the formula to find the bottom layer and then I simply just added the two uh, cubes at the end on the top rather than using the formula again. So it's up to you how you want to do that. Uh, the volume of this geometric solid here would be once again there is this rectangular prism here and then on the beside it there's another prism here so what you have to do is you have to add them together again find the volume of each section and then add them together so i'm just going to count them one cube two cubes three there's one in behind here four five six seven eight so the volume of this geometric solid is eight centimeters cubed and then this one's nice and in regular shape so I can go one, two, three, four, five, six. It is six centimeters cubed high. One, two, three, three centimeter cubes wide. And one, two, three, three centimeters cubed. No, sorry, not three centimeters cubed. What am I talking about? Three centimeters by three centimeters by six centimeters. So the volume is going to be six centimeters times three centimeters times three centimeters, which is 18 times three, which is equal to 54 centimeters cubed. A few more examples down here. Um, this is two centimeters by one, two, three, four, five, six centimeters by one, two centimeters. So the volume of this object is equal to two centimeters times six centimeters times two centimeters, which is equal to 24 centimeters cubed. This one, I'm just going to count them. It's a little more difficult because there's actually one in behind here and one in behind here. So I would say that the volume of this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That one's hard. I'm gonna do that again to make sure I did it correctly. So there's one, two, three, four in behind there. Then there's five, six in behind there, seven, eight, nine, and then another one behind there, 11. And then the volume of this. Now I can find the volume of each layer and then just add them up. So the volume of this bottom layer is one, two, three, four, four centimeters, one, two, three, four centimeters by one centimeter. So the volume of this layer is 16 centimeters cubed. The volume of this is four centimeters by three centimeters, which is 12 centimeters cubed. This one, two, three, four again by two centimeters by one. So the volume of this is eight centimeters cubed. And the volume of this is one, two, three, four centimeters by one centimeter by one centimeter is equal to four centimeters cubed. And then if I were to add all of those up, it'd be 28, 36, 40. So you're gonna add them together. It's going to be 40 centimeters cubed. I hope that you found this lesson useful. I believe it's a fairly easy concept for you to understand. Once again, if you have any questions about this lesson, please feel free to contact me in Google Classroom, send me a message or a private comment, and we'll set up a personalized Google Meet. Or if I can't answer the question right through Google Classroom, I will do that. The assignment associated with this lesson are pages 136 and pages 137. Good luck, and I will talk to you all soon. Take care.